So here we are in the last week of June 2025, and AMD has just released a brand new CPU. Woohoo! That is always good news. But interestingly, this CPU hasn't been released for the AM5 platform, which is their most recent platform that's been around almost three years now. No, no, they've issued a new CPU for their almost nine-year-old AM4 platform. Now, why on earth would they do such a thing, and how can that make any sense commercially? We're going to be taking a look at that right now, right here on Tech Talk. Now you might not have heard too much about this new CPU release from AMD because it was released pretty quietly, but indeed they've brought out a new CPU for the AM4 platform, a platform that's going to have its ninth birthday coming up here in September of 2025. Now I don't know what you think about a decision to release a CPU on such an old platform. When I first read about it I thought, man this is kind of weird, especially considering AM5 has been out for three years, almost three years now, and we all just assume that that's what people are building right now, right? And there's plenty of CPUs available for AM4 as it is, why would they bring out another brand new one? And not only are they bringing out a new CPU, but it's one of their great X3D CPUs. So this is really their kind of more premium line of CPUs, especially for gaming because it's got that 3D V cache that uh, gamers love and just makes your games run so much more smoothly. Well, to give you a little more information about the chip itself, it's very, very similar to the 5600X3D that we already know and love. In fact, it's named the 5500X3D. And the architecture is pretty much exactly the same as the 5600. It's a six core, 12 thread, 105 watt Zen 3 processor with a 96 megabyte level uh, three cache. And of course it has AMD's awesome 3D V cache in it. Um, the only difference between the 5500X3D that's just been announced and the 5600X3D is the 5500X3D is going to run at a slightly slower clock speed. Uh, so really it's basically just a slightly detuned 5600X3D. They're very, very similar, virtually identical outside of that slightly reduced clock speed. Now, you might be excited about this because this is a budget price CPU. They're aiming for a price, from what I've read, it sounds like somewhere between $150 and $200 US. And that makes it pretty inexpensive for uh, an X3D chip. But here's the bad news for you. If you live in North America, the United Kingdom, Europe, Africa, or Asia, you're not going to be able to buy it. Um, because this chip is only being sold in Latin America. It's a region-specific CPU, and in this case, that region is Latin America only. Now, that makes it pretty interesting because AMD doesn't often release these region-specific CPUs, first of all. And again, as I've already mentioned, this is being built for an old platform. So really, why are they doing this? Well, one of the big reasons is that sometimes when we live in North America or Europe or in parts of the Western world, we forget that the whole world doesn't operate like our countries do. Uh, things are different. And even on my channel, I get this all the time. When I make a video and I say I paid a certain amount for a CPU or a GPU, I always get a chorus of people in the comments, oh, you got ripped off, you got paid way too much. And usually those are folks in the United States. And what they don't understand is that where I live in Canada, computer parts are significantly more expensive than they are down in the States. And that's even after you factor in the foreign currency exchange rate. Uh, that's just the way my country is. There's lots of things up here that are way more expensive for us to buy than they are in the States. You want to buy tires for your car in Canada, you're going to spend way more than the same tire down in the U.S. Uh, you know, we're, we're a country that's got big geography, not that many people, so the costs are just higher. And so when we look at what AMD is doing here by releasing this in Latin America, clearly they're identifying a need in, a lat in Latin America that maybe doesn't exist elsewhere in the world. And I can kind of relate to this because, again, on some of these videos I've made, I've had commenters chiming in from Latin America saying, hey, you wouldn't believe how much more expensive it is to build an AM5 PC than an AM4 PC where I live. The gap is huge. So folks in these areas, they're still building AM4. They're happy to have AM4. They're upgrading AM4. They're building AM4. They're buying AM4 because the pricing just makes sense where they live. So it would seem to me that AMD is really speaking or being alert to different geographic realities in the world and what people's needs are when it comes to their computing. Now, a thing I, I really like about this, and, and I know I'm going to harp on this a fair bit, the fact that this is a nine-year-old platform, because let's face it, for computers, nine years is, is like forever. Um, but I think with this launch, what AMD is really showing is that they're committed to 
supporting and helping to maintain the huge numbers of people globally that have AM4 computers and keeping them on an upgrade path uh, and supporting that platform as long as humanly possible. And it's interesting because the website PC World, they made a comment, they released an article about the release of this 5500X 3D and there was a comment on PC World that I thought was really fascinating that came directly from AMD. And I'll show you what they had on their website here. Uh, they said, PC World spoke with AMD on the subject of the AM4 sockets longevity at CES over a year ago. Now that would be the consumer electronics show that happened in January of 2024. Uh, they say a representative said that supporting the huge remaining base of AM4 users was important and that the company will be doing it so long as the older DDR4 memory remains available and economically viable to produce. So I thought that was a super interesting comment because here AMD is saying, hey, look, man, we know there's tons of AM4 computers out there. We know that people in, in all parts of the world are still buying these things, building them, upgrading them. So as long as the DDR4 memory that's a core part of the AM4, AM4 platform is available and economically priced, we're going to keep supporting the platform. Uh, and I, for one, like I'm an AM4 guy. I haven't built AM5 yet. I don't really have a need to. So, you know, despite my curiosity, I, I just haven't put the time and effort and money into it. But when I look at these comments, I think this is fantastic because I think what AMD is doing here is there's two things that's really setting them apart and makes this a really important CPU release from the enthusiast mindset. Like if you live in North America like I do, no way you're not going to be able to buy this new CPU, the 5500X 3D, but it's still really important and it's important for enthusiasts for two main reasons. Uh, first of all, it shows a real commitment to the consumer because here's the thing. You know, when we look at other brands like Intel, with Intel, you've only got a few CPUs that you can upgrade to on any given motherboard, and then you've got to replace the motherboard with a new socket. So what you see a lot of the times, you want to upgrade, you got two parts you got to get rid of, you got to get rid of your current CPU, you got to get rid of the motherboard. Um, so that increases costs, and that's, that's one issue. But when you think about all the people that buy pre-built computers, whether it's Dell, Lenovo, HP, whatever, if you say to them, okay, you know, their computer's getting kind of slow, they're not happy with it, they want to upgrade. If you say, hey, we're going to swap out your CPU with a new CPU, that's one thing that they might very likely be inclined to do. But you say to them, oh, we got to swap out your CPU and your motherboard. A lot of them are just going to say, you know what, I'm going to buy a new computer. And so what you're doing is you're kind of forcing obsolescence on people that may not need it to have to buy a whole lot more stuff than they otherwise would. And so by having a platform that's so that's got so much longevity that's around for so long and is supported with new parts for so long, what AMD is really saying to people is, hey, look, you know, you want to upgrade this, you want to hold on to your computer, you're, you're in a situation where budget is important, you want to keep what you've got as long as you can while keeping it relevant, we're going to support you while you do that. I think that's a fantastic display of consideration for the consumer and the consumer's budgetary constraints. And of course, for people that do want to always upgrade to the latest and greatest, that they wanted to get AM5 as soon as it came out, it doesn't hurt them at all because the AM5 products are still there. So it gives people two channels that they can choose from. They can choose to be that person that's always upgrading to something new, or they can be that kind of person that holds on to what they got, upgrades it over time to make it better and better until finally the point comes where it's just not supported anymore. And I think to give people that choice is really amazing. I think that's just a fantastic business model to, to pursue. The second thing that I think it shows on the part of AMD is a real commitment to sustainability. Because let's face it, by having upgradability like this, by having a platform that lasts, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11 years where you can continue to buy newer, better parts and you can continue to upgrade it, you're keeping a lot of motherboards and computers out of the recycling centers and landfills. Um, you know, if you have to change your, like I said, if you have to change your motherboard and CPU every time you upgrade, there's going to be a ton of people that are just going to get rid of their computers and buy new computers. And so there's excess power supplies, cases, you know, potentially graphics cards, memory, everything else that's just going to recycling or getting tossed out or, or you know, we're buying more stuff constantly. It's kind of consumer driven obsolescence. Having this ability to upgrade for such a long period of time, you might be keeping all those excess components uh, out of the recycling and out of the landfills that don't really need to be there, right? So I think for both of those reasons, for the consumer support and for the environmental sustainability, 
What AM, what uh, AMD did with AM4 is just, it's phenomenal. And I don't think it's matched by, by any other manufacturer. I can't think of a single computer platform that has had the longevity of this one. In fact, I looked back uh, at a list of CPUs for the AM4 platform that was released two years ago. So this isn't even a complete list. It's a two year old list. There was 139 CPUs on the AM4 list. Uh, 139 different CPUs. So that gives you an idea of just how wide ranging the upgradability of this platform is. And I think that that's fantastic. And we need more of this. We need more consideration for longevity. The days of planned obsolescence, I think, you know, have, have run their course because we are more environmentally sensitive. We are more concerned about budget. The cost of living is getting higher. You know, it is tougher for people to afford this stuff. So this idea of having a platform that you hold on to and main, maintains consistency for many, many years, I think is brilliant. And I've even got a, I've got an old MSI B350M Gaming Pro. It's currently my home theater PC. Uh, I bought that in 2017 and it's still great. I just bought a new AMD APU for it last year. Um, so people are holding on to these things because they're totally useful. And I love that computer. It works really well. And so I think this is a lesson really that Intel can learn from AMD. Uh, Intel should be looking at what AMD is doing here because AM4 was wildly successful. And I think people are hungry for this kind of longevity. So that's my thoughts on, on this new CPU, the 5500X3D that AMD has put out. I think they're doing it because it does make commercial sense in Latin America. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for consumers and a lot of sense for the environment. But what are your thoughts? Do you like to see this kind of longevity, this kind of upgradability that spans years and years and years? Or are you more the kind of person you don't care about that? You want to have the latest and greatest regardless. I'd love to hear your comments. Feel free to put them down below. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because I'd love to see you again on the next video. That's it for this time. I'm Graham Hughes. I look forward to seeing you again.